now to the growing church sex abuse scandal in western New York and several high-ranking Buffalo Jesuits named in a new list of abusive priests. The Jesuit religious order revealing a new list today admitting these Buffalo priests had credible allegations of sexual abuse of a minor. On that list, a former president of Canisius High School, a former Canisius College counselor, and a supervisor for the entire Northeast province. Canisius College says it had no knowledge of any instances of sex abuse in the past or at the time either priest was employed by the college. One of the priests appearing on that list, the Reverend Vincent Mooney. As I-Team Chief Investigator Charlie Specht uncovered, Mooney allegedly raped and impregnated a woman decades ago. And tonight, she's bravely sharing her story. The woman still remembers the staircase leading to the priest's office at Canisius High School. It was nearly 60 years ago, and she was a young schoolgirl at Mount St. Joseph's Academy, housed on what is now Canisius College. It was after my father's death, and I wasn't handling it very well. And uh, a nun at the school where I was going to was... Uh, sympathetic and she wanted to help me so she hooked me up with this Jesuit priest at Canisius High School. But he was no ordinary priest. For most of the 60s and 70s, Father Vincent Mooney was president of Canisius High School, run by the Jesuit religious order. After years of counseling and what she now considers grooming, Father Mooney offered to hear her confession in his office when she was a young woman. He uh, heard my confession, and as I got up from the kneeler and he came around from the other side, he attacked me. He was over six feet tall, a large man, and uh, I was only five foot three and completely shocked and not comprehending what was going on. Terrified, she says she escaped and burst down the stairs and into the parking lot, adjusting her skirt and blouse along the way. I felt him on top of me, and I felt constricted. After everything was over, I, I just got up and, and, and I ran. I just ran. I was catching a bus at the corner to go home. It was, I was just in agony wondering why, why. The woman is now 75, lives in Hamburg, and asks that her name be withheld because her family does not know all the details of her story. That's because the sexual assault was only the beginning of her nightmare. Within a few months, she says she learned she was pregnant with Father Mooney's child. And I would never told anyone. I didn't tell my mother. I didn't tell my friends. You just didn't discuss things like that. Her mother found out about the pregnancy, but neither she nor Father Mooney, who died in 1981, ever learned that he was the father. Her mother insisted she have an abortion, which was illegal in the 1960s. She started hemorrhaging and almost bled to death. She was rushed to Sisters Hospital, where a doctor saved her life. It was in that moment, near death, that the woman decided she wanted to live, to fight back, and to make something of her life. The woman built a 30-year career at UB and Roswell Park. She has a son and three grandchildren, a gentle laugh, and a perfect smile. But the pain has never completely left her. It just never leaves you. You're constantly reminded, and you feel worthless, and it's agony. TV news stories inspired her to contact the diocese and the Jesuit province earlier this year. The Jesuits offered her a $28,000 settlement, though she says money was not her motivation. I didn't contact them for money. I contacted them for support and awareness in ways that it could help me and help others. In an email, a spokesman for the Jesuits called the situation, quote, horrific, and said, there are no words to truly assuage the heinous nature of this abuse. A spokeswoman for Canisius did not comment to the I-team for this story. Church records and newspaper clippings show Mooney served at Canisius from 1958 to 1975 and was appointed president and rector in 1968. He had close contact with young girls through his role as moderator of the Western New York Sodality Union. Internal church records obtained by the I-Team show the diocese has known about the abuse since March of this year, but did not include Mooney's name on either of its two lists of abusive priests. In an email, Buffalo Diocese spokeswoman Kathy Spangler said the priest's name was not included on the list in November because it was the only claim the diocese has received against that priest, and the claim was unable to be investigated before the priest had died. It's definitely minimizing it. If a person comes forward, you know, explains their situation, one should be enough. One should be enough to put the individual's name on the list. They have no right to privacy. The church made them private. 
that's not correct. That's an abuse of, of and a cover-up of criminal activity. You're always alone until you expose them. The Jesuits earlier today expressed sorrow for the abuse and acknowledged that the order previously received another allegation against Father Mooney. In response to the eight Buffalo priests who were on that list, Canisius College released a statement stressing that no abuse was alleged while the Jesuits were assigned at the college, and Canisius High School said it knew of only one case decades ago that involved a student. For the I-Team, Charlie Speck, 7 Eyewitness News.